Hi, it's Bronwyn from Rap. Jazz is a fantastic genre of music and probably one of my favorites. In this video, I'm going to share a couple of tips and techniques for mixing out smooth jazz tracks. The very first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have a multimeter on your main mix bus. I like to have an analyzer, a goniometer and something that I can see the lufts, the true peak as well as the RMS levels. I like to have a correlation meter as well. So I find that this multimeter is very useful for me to manage and control and keep an eye on my levels. I also add in a gain plugin so that I can switch in between mono and stereo listening, especially for mix purposes. I'll get into that a little bit later. Then you want to listen to your track and you want to start to clean up any noise. So let's have a listen right at the beginning of the track and see if there's any noise and anything that we need to tidy up. Yeah, you can definitely hear that at the beginning of each of these guitar parts, uh, there is definitely a little bit of noise that needs tidying up. So that is exactly what we're going to do. I'm just going to grab them all and I'm going to trim them. Let's have a listen now. And I'm good with that for the moment. When you're working with guitars in smooth jazz, these are my top five tips. Number one, I like to use a noise gate to clean up the guitar part. Just make sure that you check your settings, make sure that your threshold and uh, your release times are set correctly. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're actually going to cut off the resonance of the notes instead of uh, tackling the silence in between the notes. You might actually interfere with uh, the ringing and the resonance. You might cut off the duration of the note and it might sound a little bit unnatural. So you just need to watch it. If you don't want to work with noise gates, you can always actually use a gain plugin and you can automate the, the levels between each notes. You can then, of course, go in and use your editing tools and you can actually sit there and cut and mute and uh, do little fades and just tidy up the noise in between those notes. But for me, I really like to spend a bit of time and work with the noise gate so it does it automatically for me. The next thing that I like to put on my guitar is an amp. The whole idea of the amp for smooth jazz guitars is literally to create a nice tone and also to help manage levels. I then add in an equalizer and the whole idea of this equalizer is for clarity. It's to sweeten up that guitar and bring in that definition and that clarity that you need on the guitar part. And then you want to add in a compressor. Now the whole idea of the compressor is for consistency in level, but I like to use compressors where I can dial in and take advantage of tonal shaping as well. So I like to dial in additional character and I like to use compressors that add additional character to specific guitar parts within my smooth jazz mixes. It's just one of the things that I like to do and I find that it works really nicely in the smooth jazz uh, arena. Then the final thing is to add in your effects. Now, a smooth jazz guitar can really benefit from delay, chorus, flanger, from uh, reverb, and uh, you can even see that I've got a, a rotor plug in here as well, um, which can really add some nice depth and character onto the guitar part. It really just depends on what you're going for, and a bit of experimentation over here is key. All right. Let's have a listen to what this actually sounds like. So I'm going to just bypass all of these uh, effects. And uh, here we go. Noise gate. Right, let's add the amp. listening context. Mm -hmm. 
So those are my top five tips for mixing out smooth jazz electric guitar. Then, of course, we've got uh, other instruments that we need to take into consideration as well. Let's go and have a look at our drum kit, for example. And uh, I've got a really lovely drum bus compression happening over my drum kit just to give it that little bit of punch that I need in order to give it a sense of consistency and, and coherency and basically just glue that whole drum kit together. So I've just placed a really nice Kotelnikov um, mastering compressor right over this uh, drum kit. Let's have a listen to the drum kit without the compression. And you can hear how it just brings it forward a bit. Then what I've done on this drum kit as well is I've also given it a little bit of a sense of space. It's one of the things that you really need to consider when you're mixing out jazz is the sense of space that you're going to give the whole mix. Now, there are a number of ways of doing this. You can either add in a reverb onto your main mix bus so that everything that runs through that main mix bus goes through the same sense of space. Um, or you could individually give each um, instrument its own sense of space and hope that they all work together. Uh, or you could do a combination of both, which is what I like to do for jazz. I like to give the whole mix a sense of space because you're thinking about the band. They're all playing together. Jazz is very much like a live feel kind of thing. Um, you know, you, you, you don't see them as separate elements. They're, it's combined as one unit. So it makes sense to give a sense of space as one unit and use your reverb over the main mix bus in order to achieve that. And yet within that, you can then play around with actually crafting and creating a special exclusive space that fits in with the overall space for each instrument. Right, then I want to show you something really special concerning, it's just a really nice mix technique. I've got a gain plug-in over my main stereo bus and uh, the whole idea of this is to be able to switch in and out of mono and stereo monitoring. Now the whole idea of mono mixing, mono mixing is quite difficult because in stereo, we get a false sense of space when we're busy mixing. But in mono, there's absolutely no place for those instruments to hide. And it's a really great way for you to determine what is really sticking out. It's too loud or it's too far back or if there are any phase issues in your bottom end. Let's have a listen. I'm going to just play the mix in stereo for the moment and then we'll switch into mono. And uh, you'll immediately be able to hear which elements of the mix are too loud or too far back. And you can go back and, and balance them and adjust them. And then, of course, uh, from there, you switch back into stereo and you'll hear such an enormous difference. And it just really helps you to get your mix all nicely coherent and nicely balanced. In fact, I would recommend that you spend at least 70 to 80% of your mix time mixing in mono. So let's have a listen. <laughs> And then, of course, let's have a look at our goniometer just to make sure that our phase is correct as we're switching in and out of mono and stereo. <laughs> Thank you. 
So our goniometer is looking good, our meters are looking good. Let's go and check our spectrum analyzer. <laughs> Everything is looking really good. It's all within the bounds. And now I just need to go into each element of the mix and maybe do a little bit of refinement. You'll notice on my main stereo bus, I've just put a limiter in as well, just to manage those peaks. And then for some character, look, for me, jazz is very old school, even if it is your, your new style smooth jazz. Um, I like to run it through a very specific plugin. I've got the, the Kramer tape available at Waves, and I just really like the, the sonic character and the warmth. If you're looking for that analog warmth and you don't have one of these amazing plugins, then you can always mimic it using a tape delay. Uh, all you need to make sure is that there's no feedback and uh, there's no tempo sync on, the delay time is at zero. Set your wit uh, to how uh, much saturation you'd like, and then run your mix through it. So here we go. This is the version without the tape saturation. <laughs> it well that's it from me thank you for watching i hope that you really enjoy your splash of jazz smooth jazz pack and uh, that you've been inspired a bit and some of these techniques will come in really handy as you're mixing i'll catch you again next time